to the regular season, you know, Baylor for Big 12 Championship tomorrow, just kind of what's the emotions going right now with next to going tomorrow? Just ready to go. I mean, um, you know, waiting around is probably the worst part of it all. Um, kids are excited. Coaches and staff are excited. We know it's uh, a big challenge. We know, you know, what's at stake. But at the same time, we're fully focused on just trying to win another game. And we'll prepare just like we have for every single game this season. And that's tended to be good enough for us up to this point. So we don't want to change what we're doing. And we'll try to minimize the distraction for the kids and, and just focus in on the match. You know, I know you won't be focused on yourself, but, you know, think of the whole Big 12 race, Texas Tech's right there on your heels. Is, right. is that coming to play any time in your mind right now? No, it, it really isn't because if we win, we know that it doesn't matter what they do. So really all we can control is, is ourselves. You know, we're, we're talking a lot about Baylor and what they do and mm -hmm. a lot about what we need to do. But, you know, the, the Tech K-State game will take care of itself. We, we expect them to win. And so you just go into the game with that mindset. They're going to win, so we need to win. When you look at the total scope of the Big 12, it's pretty much been consistency, and that's what's carried you guys to the top of the standings. Yep. Um, offensively, defensively, the consistency this year, how much confidence does that have you going into tomorrow's match? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very confident. Our team's on a bit of a roll. Um, like you said, they've been very consistent throughout the year. That's probably why we're on top of the standings at this point. Um, you know, I think we have a mature group. I think we have an experienced group. Uh, they've played a lot of games together, um, you know, so... I think when you have that, you, you tend to have a little more consistency. Younger teams uh, tend to be up and down a little bit because you have good days and bad days. So this this team, a lot of these kids were around in 2017 when we won it down in Austin, and uh, they'll they'll um, rely on some of those experience to get us through. But yeah, the the maturity and the drive of this team is, is probably what's led to our consistency. Does having the race be so close this late into the season does that kind of help maybe wandering thoughts of, of postseason? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just an exciting time of year. You know. Um, it wasn't so exciting last year for us. It was uh, kind of crazy for different reasons. But, you know, you'd rather be in this situation. And, yeah, you start thinking about the Big 12 tournament. You start thinking about the NCAA bracket and who you're going to play in seeding. But I think when you wander too far, you, you lose sight of what you have right in front of you. And what we have is a very, very good Baylor team that we have to be ready for. So we talked uh, yesterday a little bit about the big picture and the excitement and, and all the stuff that goes along with it. And we told our team, you've earned that right to enjoy these moments. Uh, however, push all that aside and let's focus on Baylor because if you don't, uh, they're a good team and they're going to upset what we're trying to do. Usually very physical Baylor. Is yeah. that kind of the same same case this year? I think so. Um, you know, watching them on video, they, they, they do what Baylor do. They're very physical, they're aggressive, they're fast, they're athletic, they're very direct. So they pose challenges. You know, I, watching OU uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of this Baylor team. Um, they're big, they're strong, they're going to compete. So we told our kids, it's just like last week, you know, you got to go out and compete. You got to match them physically, and when you get the ball, you got to try and play some good soccer and open them up. So, I would en envision it being a similar type game as to what we saw uh, last Friday against Oklahoma, and uh, we handled that quite well. Go, Chauncey. You had success at home. Is it a matter of just the home, the home field, the home stadium, or is there, is there more to it? Well, I think there's there's the familiarity of the field and how it plays, and the speed, and the, you know how long or short the grass is, and all those little things. The home crowd gives you that little bit of extra energy, I think, in any sport, um, so that helps. But there's also just a comfort level. You know, you're sleeping in your own bed, your friends and family are around, you're in your routine. You know, you, you're not on a bus, you're not in a hotel, you're not on a plane. So I think all those things combined is, is why in most sports there is a home field advantage. Um, you know, our home field advantage has been great this year. We've, we've, we've maximized it and used it to our uh, benefit. But, um, you know, maybe that gives us a slight edge going into the game tomorrow night. But um, you know, we can't rely on that. We gotta, we gotta take care of business and play to the best of our ability. You mentioned experience earlier. Does this have a chance to be one of the more memorable senior nights of your time? Well, it does. It also has a chance to be a, a kind of a downer. You know, that's that's one of the distractions, if you like, is the senior night. These kids deserve to be recognized for the great job they've done for our program. However, the big picture is we're trying to win a championship, and uh, that needs to be our focus. Uh, we'll honor the seniors after the game, win, lose, or tie, and we'll certainly honor them at our banquet in February. Uh, as much as we possibly can, uh, but I think the the real focus isn't about the seniors because they're going to play again. You know, we, we know we're playing some postseason games, so it's not over for them yet. Um, so really, the big focus, unfortunately, for the seniors can't be the seniors at, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, like I said, let's get the game over with. Let's try to win it, and then we'll do what we need to do for the seniors.
When it comes to Baylor's offense, a little bit different look from when preparing for OU. Because with OU, you had to deal with the Big 12's top goal scorer. Right. But with Baylor, their goal scoring is a little more spread out, kind of similar to OSU. Yeah. How does the preparation differ for a team that has widespread goal? It, it definitely differs. You know, the OU preparation was very much uh, focused on keeping uh, Kaylee Dow quiet. And our kids, to be fair, did a ter terrific job on her. She didn't have many looks at goal. Uh, Baylor have Reagan Padgett up front on the right side most of the time. Super, super athletic kid. Um, so she brings a challenge different from, uh, you know, Kaylee Dow because she, she's just super fast. And so our kids are going to have to get their positioning spot on. So we'll, we'll prepare for her. But, yeah, she's got six or seven goals, I think. Uh, but they do have other kids that can score, and they're also very dangerous on set plays. So uh, those are some focuses. Some of the focus this week that we've had is trying to make sure we're prepared for those things. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to OSU's offense, JC, she quits kind of scoring the goals early in the season, but her role's kind of shifted mm -hmm. to a supplier now. She leads the league in assists. How has her role kind of shifted from that goal scoring to now she's the supplier? Yeah, it's been interesting. You know, we've kind of had phases, uh, not intentionally, but JC and Olivia were scoring goals like crazy uh, early in the season. And then as the season went on, Grace kind of found her scoring shoes and she was kind of filling that void for us. And then she gets injured. And we talked about, uh, as a group, we all need to step up and chip in. And you get Claire Ganser and Cammie Huddleston scoring on Friday. And moving forward without Grace, I think that's what's going to have to happen. JC's going to have to set up some plays and she may need to score, score for us. Olivia got her goal, which is great for her confidence. She's been playing so well. Just the final piece hadn't been there, so that was awesome. And, um, you know, we have other kids who can score. You know, Charmay Morgan scored a few early in the season. Webby can score. Julia's chipped in. So moving forward without Grace, they're all going to have to pick up that slack. And, you know, it's just another challenge for this group. And I'm, um, I don't have any doubt that they can handle it. Is there perhaps another gear that we can see from Olivia down the stretch if she does kind of get that goal scoring kind of confidence back? Yeah, hopefully just that, that little final piece. You know, she's still... Well, she's still holding the ball up so well. She's still beating people on the dribble. She's still creating so much for her offense. Uh, she just went in a little slump like some forwards do and certainly some freshmen do where the ball's not falling for her. So maybe that goal will, will get her belief back a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, if she you know finds her scoring shoes again for postseason, it's going to help us um, because, obviously, uh, losing all those goals that Grace had scored is a, is a big loss for this team. So Olivia certainly has ability, and you know, to be fair, Gabriella can as well. And um, if those two start scoring goals, uh, it's going to make us even more dangerous in the attack.